Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit of a later start this morning. I was up putting a video together for you guys. So it's around about 10 o'clock or so in the morning here. You can see the sun is up behind me. Uh, gonna be an absolutely beautiful day. Low 70s and nothing but sun. So we got the boonie hat out. We are trying to do our best to stay out of the sun, uh, unlike yesterday. And uh, I paid for it all night. My lips were chapped. It was, it was tough. So uh, we got through it. We got through it. So I've already kind of got a little start going here. I was working on my process of how things are going to work here for this gable end. So that's kind of the gist of it up there. What uh, really is, I say, the hardest part. This is the part that I work on here on the gable ends just so everything kind of is snug and tight uh, but getting that angle uh, getting that angle on these boards you know getting this first one plumbed up nice and it's got a nice you know nice corner to it here again we're gonna have trim molding uh, over all that so it'll be it'll be it'll look really nice when it uh, kind of all comes together so this is what we're going to work on today, getting these two gable ends, two gable ends uh, fixed up and uh, really shouldn't be a problem. I'm looking to, uh, forward to it being a relatively, uh, relatively quick day as far as getting those done. But, you know, doom on me for, you know, saying anything like something's going to be easy or kind of easy to tackle. Who knows what we're going to get into, but uh, I've already got another, another stack brought down from the wood pile up there. Now this is the section here where I'm going to, actually the 10 foot boards are not gonna be long enough, so I'm gonna to have to go back up and grab some some of those 12 footers that I've been waiting, drying. And uh, I think I have enough, I'm pretty sure I do. So yeah, we'll just go from there. All right, let's get into it. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Uh, just worked my way 360 degrees around here, putting up the sheathing, and it went fantastic. Uh, it's early, it is early, it's two o'clock, and I think I'm probably ahead of what I was, where I was hoping to be at today, which is fantastic. So I think my plans now, I'm gonna take a look at the plans, see what they say and try to set myself up, if not start, for tomorrow. Uh, but to finish this out, I'm probably gonna snap a chalk line along the bottom here, the bottom edges uh, around the cabin, just kind of square those off and give it that finished look, since the next time I'm gonna touch the siding or anything like that is when I put up the battens. So, and that's down the road a little bit. Uh, I, I don't need the battens on it for this thing to be occupied, so. Uh, that may be one of the last things I do, some of the outside trim work and stuff like that. So we'll see kind of how that goes. But yeah, I'll snap a chalk line, make some cuts, and then we'll, I got to get some four by fours going because next is the structure on the porch. So let's get to it. All right, gang, well, I took the last couple hours of the day here this afternoon to kind of give you a little preview of what we're gonna be working on tomorrow, some of that framing, 
uh, for the front porch there on cabin too. So I got some of the four by fours uh, cut to length and things like that. So it should start to go up fairly quickly tomorrow. And um, beyond that, I'm gonna have to get some two by sixes. We gotta put some rafters up in there, keep them on the same angle as the uh, front uh, of the cabin at 22 and a half degrees. That's uh, 512 pitch. So that'll continue down onto the framing that you see see there behind me. So that's how it's going to be covered over. We're going to have a little different entry. It's going to have an arc to it and things like that. So actually have a uh, hip that has got to go on the front of it. So I'm going to have some complex angles and stuff I'm going to have to figure out. But that's, you know, at least a week down the line or so. So uh, just want to show you how we ended up today. I made those cuts along the bottom part of the... Uh, exterior sheathing there everything's squared up and looking pretty good so looking forward to getting out here and working on the front porch tomorrow all right guys we'll see you then well good morning everybody welcome back uh give you a little preview yesterday at the uh closing of the clip here uh what i've been what i spent a couple hours there at the end of the day working on basically getting the framework kind of set up here for the porch here on cabin two so as we're looking at it right now, you know, I've got uh, two main posts, a beam going across and then a connector back to the cabin. So we've got to duplicate that on the right side of the cabin today. All right, guys, we're cranking right along here. I got the uh, angle braces up. There were only six of them that needed to be cut, so they went really quick. And uh, those angle braces turned out just fine. So corner post here is plumb, and that, that connector piece is level up there. This, is, this beam is level across here, but this post here, the one on the inside, on both sides, uh, leans to the inside. Well, we're gonna correct that uh, when we put the rafters on. Really, my next step is I gotta put a ledger board up here on the cabin. It's a one by eight. There's two sections of one by eight that's on this side of the door, one here and then one over here. And then obviously the rafters connect from that ledger board out onto uh, this beam here, this support beam that runs across. So that's what we're gonna look like. And that's, that's the goal for the end of the day here is to get those done. Um, like I said, we gotta prepare for some, some rain in the morning and that's gonna be, uh, we just gotta have to prep for that the best we can. So I'm actually gonna run out now. I'm gonna grab some two by eights and just so I have everything here uh, for the afternoon because it's going to take me a second to figure out all the cuts on these uh, two by eights because it the plans call for two by sixes and I use two by eights on the inside so I can get the <coughs> <coughs> proper R value for the ceiling insulation. So I've got a little bit of math to do and uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. Let's do it. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, good morning. It is now Saturday morning. It's now two days after I last talked to you, talking about doing some math, uh, about trying to figure out those rafters and um, the angle of those cut joints, the seat cut and all that other stuff. So this is kind of where we're sitting at right now. So you can see some of those up there. So this side, you can see behind me here, the left side of the cabin, those were all done on Thursday evening in I probably got back about uh, maybe two o'clock or so from town picking up those two by eights and it, it took me a minute to, to, to say the least. Let's just say that uh, by the time I got the last rafter up there, uh, it was around seven o'clock at night and it was frustrating on some points, um, well on most, most things when it came to doing that, but it was it was just one of those things where something I did inside, which is using two by eights for my rafters on the inside, absolutely changed everything about the height and the measurements and everything like that. So these posts, these posts here that are vertical should have been, should have accounted for the height 
the additional height created by those two by eights instead of those two by sixes. It was really something. So I now actually have a spacer across that beam there that the rafters are sitting down on, the seat cuts are sitting down on. I actually have a one inch spacer, spacer that um, I put on there to help account for that change in height. Um, <laughs> the angle from the, let me see if I can show this to you a little better here. So this angle here, you know, it's about 22 and a half degrees, it's a 512. And then coming down onto this rafter here is very close, very close. So when I put up a piece of uh, underlayment up there, sheathing up on the roof, I gotta get some more 5 uh, zip panels. When I put that up there, it should look like one seamless roof. You know, there shouldn't be a bump or a divot uh, or anything like that where those joints connect. So I absolutely did my best. I mean, I was up and down the ladder a hundred times and it, uh, <laughs> like I said, it was frustrating, but here we are. So th that was Thursday night, Friday, absolute rain out yesterday. Um, so, that was a wa it was a wasted day. I got absolutely nothing accomplished down here at the cabin. It was all interior uh, stuff up inside the house and things like that. But it's Saturday morning. We're down here and we're going to work. I've already got my first one up down here on this far right end now. And now the next one I'm going to put up is this one here. This is going to bump this post out and plumb it up. Uh, as long as all of the angles and everything are correct. It, it's the same process I use for the left side here that's already done. That uh, that post is is plumb and it, and it looks great. So uh, no, no complaints on that. So let me just show you here what I got going on. I do have a pattern, all right? This is a hard fought pattern for sure. And I actually, uh, as I drew it up and cut the seat cut and everything and made some more measurements, when I cut this back side of this seat cut, I actually take off another quarter of an inch. So it may not mean anything to you guys, but uh, believe me, as I'm sitting here looking at this, in fact, here, I'll show you right here. So on this seat cut, the way the pattern has it, I actually will end up cutting somewhere in like right there. I'll put my square on this this cut here and this is this angle here and this angle here are perpendicular so I'll put my square on here and this is how I get this angle you can see this kind of swoops a little bit um, again the patterns not perfect but it does what I need it to do and that's that's all I really care about so we got the first one up and I'm fixing to cut out the second second rafter here and then we're gonna put it up uh, one of the things about up here on on the ledger board, I had mentioned that last time I talked to you guys. I got a, uh, it's actually a 1x12 or a 1x10, I think, that I put up as the ledger board right here. So that was, you know, that was another one of those things that, you know, plans called for one thing and it is what it is. I'm done talking about how frustrating that was. So, but one of the good things, I had some of these old Simpson brackets up in the barn and they are doing miracles up here with helping me get these up and aligned and hold them in place and stuff like that. So they've been working great. So I pump four nails into that and then three nails actually through the rafter into, uh, into the ledger board. So I'm certainly well secured. And then down here on the seat cut, um, you know, three nails go into the top plate here as well. But there you can see the spacer that I have on top of this beam. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're sitting at. And let's get to work. These are going to be done today for sure. All right, let's get it.
Okay, so I have the top portion already kind of toenailed in there through that Simpson bracket. And you can see down here on this uh, seat cut down here that, you know, I can obviously, I obviously have to push this out in order for that to sit squarely or firmly against the outside of my seat cut there. That will plumb up the post itself. So we'll, we'll double check that on the way, you know, when we're, when we're down on the deck. But uh, yeah, that's how that's going to sit here now with all these cuts, all these uh, rafters coming off of the same pattern off of the saw. This should line up just as we go down the line here. So I have one, two, three more uh, to put up after this one here. So one of the things that I also do as well to kind of help me out my toenail this in with my gun from the other side, I am screwing in a block here to give it resistance against this side of the rafter. So when I nail it in, it doesn't, you know, shoot towards you or towards the camera right now. It stays, I'll flush it up on this side and then I will uh, attach the block and we'll go from there. All right, gang, got the right side of the cabin uh, framed up up there with those rafters there. Everything went great. Got that, got that all done. Next thing that's got to go up on here is sheathing. So I've got to wait until my, it's a Saturday, so my wood supplier's not open today. So we're going to have to wait till Monday for that. But there is something we're going to move on with, and it's actually next in the list of things to do, and that's putting... The siding on the on this roof extension here that goes out. So what this will be, I have a lot of these smaller boards right here that I saved from those 10 foot or I'm sorry, 12 foot cutoffs, I think. So those are the ones I'm going to use to finish out this side here. So how this goes or how this is supposed to look is this is all supposed to be level along the side or supposed to be even with the side of the cabin. So what I've got to do, I've got to literally build it like I'm putting on another wall. So I'm going to have what would normally be interior sheathing here that I have to have a spacer here and here, but I'm not going to put insulation in because this is obviously an unair conditioned part of the cabin. So I'm literally just going to have the same spacers I used on the rest of the cabin, that uh, two by four with um, the plywood to give me the space or whatever space I need to bring it out to be flush with this. So if I put, uh, you know, if this happens to be an inch and a half here, because I'm going to have another inch of um, sheathing, on the outside of it here, uh, I can forego the piece of plywood, you know, and I'll have an inch and a half. And I'm just gonna do whatever is gonna work to make this flush with the outside of the cabin. So we'll follow along here. And uh, this, should, this is certainly not the most dif difficult thing I'm gonna do today. So we'll bring all the, this all the way down and then we'll knock out the other side and then we'll tackle the spacing and the outside sheathing. All right, guy, up here on the ladder right now, I wanted to give you an actual visual of what I was just talking about on how this side is going to look here over the porch and just how the wood was gonna be laid out. So this is, for all intents and purposes, exterior sheathing in the sense that it's on the same plane as the, the side, the gable end of the cabin, okay? So it is flush, uh, everything so, in order to make that happen, I had to do the same thing basically uh, as I would on the side, and that is to put these, basically these insulation nailers up. So I've got, I measured the distance back in there as to the, from the side of the cabin here to what I would need for the one inch board to be flush. So, and these nailers are exactly the right size. They're two inches which is, this would normally be the void where insulation would go. And again, I'm not going to insulate because this is over the porch. But this is basically it. So everything kind of lines up all nice and pretty. Everything is sloped along the same angle as the roof line. And then, uh, yeah, it just kind of tidies up this side of the cabin. So 
I'm still gonna have to figure out how I'm going to kind of close off the eave, the gable eave on this side, um, but we'll come to that when we get to it. Uh, so right now I'm going just to continue and put on more and more boards here until it closes off here at the end. And um, to close this off on the end, you see I have a gap right here. It's probably going to be my fascia that's along the front of the cabin there. So again, We'll cross that when we get to it. Let's get to work. All right, guys. Welcome back. It's now Sunday, probably right around noon or so on Sunday. Just wanted to show you. I was down here this morning finishing up the right-hand side here, um, up there, uh, that porch, that porch siding. So went fine. The inside, the spacer, and then the external sheathing and stuff. It went great, and uh, it, it lined up wonderfully with the side you know the side of the cabin and everything it just lined up perfect and it really it really it really looks nice for the you know really what i'm looking for so as things go now i am done with cabin two until tomorrow i have to go down and pick up some some of the 5 8 zip sheeting at my lumber supply store um so nothing, that's the next step for cabin two. So that's on hold. So I got all of this afternoon. It's a beautiful day, a little overcast, but uh, it's, I mean, short sleeve in it. It's, it's fantastic. So this is what we're gonna jump on now. And these are all the pieces I got in to uh, a couple things here. These two vents, uh, everything here is doubled up because this is for cabins three and cabins one. So I have the, piece that's going to you know kind of the where the tubes are going to tubes and the piping come out of the wall and down the back of the wall this is for that and then it's gonna made up with a section of raceway here and we'll travel down the raceway and then come out the ends here that's all for air conditioning also got some quarter inch tubing for the drainage uh, the, for the condensate pump so all that um, is ready to go. And then for the bathroom vent, again, two of them here, cabins one, cabin three, these are going to be installed uh, as vents for the bathroom vent. So it's nice little extension here. We'll get that through the wall and then we'll you know, tie everything up. So that's what we're gonna work on now. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get one and three done this afternoon. I, all, I guess it all depends. We might even start, uh, if things go well with getting this installed, you know, we might even start vacuuming out some of the uh, piping for the air conditioners to actually get them up and working. So let me hop on this and talk to you in a minute. All right, gang, up here above the bathroom here in cabin three, and it's uh, it's not quite as cramped as it seems, uh, at least compared to cabin one. Cabin one, I have the insulation up uh, in this part of the cabin, and here I haven't put it in yet, because again, I was trying to work out, you know, how things were gonna be laid out up here before I, you know, made it even tighter working conditions here. So this is kind of what we're, we're working at here. I'm trying to get the best angle for you. So we got several things that need to happen up in this space. This is the top of the bathroom vent. This is the duct output. And then of course, this is the ducting that will lead to, uh, you know, hole in a wall that's gonna lead to the outside. Okay, that's how that will be vented. And let's see here, these here. So this is all, everything related to the air conditioner. So I've got two copper pipes in here. I've got a one quarter and a three eighths, as well as a drain line. And then also coming out of that is, this is the power, power cord for the air conditioner indoor unit. This will get connected to the outdoor unit. Uh, same area as the piping will for the refrigerant and stuff like that. Also, one last thing we have up here that I haven't really talked about in a while because it's been done for some time. This is the vent. Um, that's a two inch, I think that's a two inch line. That is the vent for the bathroom and, or the shower and the toilet. So that has got to be vented outside. So I'm going to again have to have a, 
uh, piece of PVC running through the wall and then, then up above the roof line outside. That I'm anticipating, I'm gonna spray paint that kind of like flat black and uh, we'll see if that kind of hides it enough. There's really not much you can do about it. It has to be done and there is no really workaround for it. Uh, so that's it. So I'm gonna have three uh, protrusions going through the wall here um, that I need to kind of figure out. So I wanna get some measurements. I use my uh, ridge beam here <coughs> or my ridge board as the center. It's something I can use outside when I'm kind of lining things up. So I use that as the centerpiece because that does extend out into the eave area here on the gable end of this of this cabin. So I'm going to use that to measure how far over um, I'm going to start putting the holes. First, I think my priority, one I really can't move, is going to be the vent. That's got to be a straight uh, or I should say it, it is going to be a straight piece of PVC that's going to go out the wall and then up above uh, the cabin, like I said. But I can't really move that too much, whereas the uh, refrigerant lines, the drains line and everything, this is all pretty flexible. I can move this, you know, several feet in either direction. It's just a matter of bending the piping and things like that, as well as the uh, vent, the bathroom vent. This can be routed just about anywhere here along this wall. So I want to I want to put some thought into this, kind of figure out what is the best way uh, to get the stuff out. The only one I really need to line up with something outside will be the refrigerant lines here for the air conditioner, because I want them to run straight out the wall and straight down. So my wall is relatively you know, thick. If you think about it, I've got one inch inside sheathing, I've got two inches of insulation, and then I have another inch board of exterior sheathing. So I want, what I'm going to do, my interior hole here is going to be slightly higher than the exterior hole. So if you were looking at the side, uh, like a side view of it, it's going to allow the piping to have a more of a gradual turn. Um, so that it's not a straight out hole and then I have to go straight down 90 degrees. That would require a much tighter bend with the piping. And I want to try to avoid that because if you do kink it, it's going to be no good. I'm going to have to replace the whole line and everything. So uh, that's what I really want to kind of, you know, figure in first is really get that kind of lined up on a direct vertical line from the exterior uh, the condenser for the air conditioner on the outside where the lines will come straight down the wall, uh, be a much cleaner look and things like that. Uh, again, it, I've got probably three feet here of the wall that's going to be unencumbered. Again, the only thing that really needs to go straight out is going to be the vent line and, uh, you know, we'll probably tackle that first just to uh, kind of get that out of the way. Plus once it is fairly cramped up in here. So if I start piling one thing on top of another to get back there to start working on that pipe or, you know, whatever, just adding more stuff up here is just not making my problem any, any better. So let's, uh, let me get some measurements from in here. I want to go outside and take a look on where it would come uh, vertical from the outside unit. All right, guys, I'm down here behind cabin three right now with our air conditioner. If without throwing up any type of tape measure or anything like that, I really use these boards a lot of the time because these are 10 inch wide boards that are on here. And just as I look at this, I've got 10, 20, 30, probably about 35 inches or so before I reach the uh, ridge board that's up there from roughly the side of of my air conditioner. So those refrigerant lines come in, they attach under this cover here, and then the power line uh, connects to this area here. So I want everything to come down just about somewhere in this area here, which it looks like that's only about 25 inches or so. Actually, I'd like to come down mid, mid panel because those that raceway is about four inches wide, I think, maybe three and a half inches wide. So uh, I don't want to disturb the battens that are going to be on here. So probably 
somewhere, well, right here might be, really right here might be best. So that really gives me kind of a direct line right out into the uh, connectors for the piping as well as the electrical connection there. So this will be easy. So this will this this will be about 10, 20. Yeah, almost 30 inches to the middle, actually, where the ridge beam comes down. So I'm gonna go back upstairs, take a look at where 30 inches would be on that inside wall, and make sure that's not going to um Make sure that's not going to fall, start to get over there where the uh, vent line is going to come out. Again, that vent line will come out underneath the eave there, straight out, and then up above the roof line. All right, guys, heading up the ladder here behind cabin three. And I want to show you kind of how things ended up. I got the vent line out. Uh, it actually came out better than I was anticipating simply because I got a little slight gap up here above where uh, this fascia is but we're gonna tuck that in there of course we need this to be sloped down a little bit so any water rain or anything like that that gets in this uh, it's gonna flow down into uh, the sewer line but this is gonna work out great I've got it extended out here a couple feet just because that's the only pipe I had but we'll put a 90 on this and we'll send this straight up here above the roof line and then I just ended up finishing this one here. This is where the air conditioner lines are gonna come down. You can, I don't know if it shows up too well on camera, but I definitely have this cut at an angle um, so that, you know, like I described before, that when the lines come out, they don't have to make a sharp 90 degrees just to go down. This will help me kinda, just kinda round them a little bit. But uh, yeah, it turned out great. And uh, I'm gonna start putting, I think I guess putting those line sets together. Probably going to have the, uh, the bathroom vent come out kind of right next to it, right over here, maybe a little bit higher, somewhere in this area here. Again, probably in between the battens. So I'll take a measurement off of this hole here to get to the middle. Of course, it should be about 10 inches since these are all 10 inch boards, but that will, uh, I'll use the inside hole, um, try and get as center as I can. I've got the laser up in there, which I've used a couple times now, really to help out with putting the hole in for this pipe. And then I'll use it again to get the center point of my hole coming out next to it. This next one's gonna be a four and a half inch hole. It's quite bigger than this here. I think I did a, uh, a three inch hole here. So this is gonna be four and a half inches here for the four inch vent that's gonna come out of there. All right, gang, well, we're coming to the end of the day here. Uh, had a few things come up, uh, one major thing. The line set that I had had a one quarter and one half inch uh, size copper line. This set, these mini splints that I'm using here use one quarter and three eighths, so I had to go out and get some three eighths copper. Not a big deal and uh, it, it worked out just fine. So I just actually finished buttoning the last, I put the last uh, part of the line set on. Actually, I powered, I put the power on the last, but here, take a look at this. It's a nice, nice, clean looking installation. I'm really happy with it. So this is kind of how we ended up. Um, show you here the, the cover that comes down from up top there. Great day, really putting those three holes in there. They're all kind of tucked away up there. I think this is really gonna look just fine back here. I mean, who's really gonna be roaming around back here anyway? But uh, nice little system here that I picked up for that raceway to get the lines in here. So not a whole lot of slack coming down in here, nice and snug. Um, I just have to run some zip ties, I think, my condensate line here. I wanna uh, get it tight probably against the bottom here and just have it drip down here. I uh, also want to get a clamp, kind of keep that up there against the cabin itself. And 
yeah, I got the clamp on the wire here. This is SJ wire. It's um, rated for exposure, so I don't have to do anything crazy with that. But um, really fantastic. Uh, not even any issues really flaring the ends. Uh, I, I have to tell you, though, everybody I've ever talked to that installs mini splits tells you to you better do your own flares uh, one to get rid of all the excess line that may that may be there uh, so you don't have it like looped around and things like that but two when i cut those lines and looked at the flares they were absolutely terrible um i i don't know how they can sell something like that like that because they would have most certainly have leaked uh i i guess maybe that's one way they can try and you know ensure that there's going to be some sort of professional installation because things to f flaring and everything that has to go along with this installation is not difficult, but it's one of those things where, you know, you need the right tools in order to make it happen. So I have them, so I was obviously able to able to kind of do that. But uh, I was really shocked at how poor the factory flares were from the on these line sets that they had. But of course, the copper, the roll of copper that I got, um, I. I did my own on both ends so uh so let me show you here on the ground i had had the tool sitting out here so this is my flaring tool this uh, this is a rigid uh rigid flaring tool and it works great so these are mini splits so these are 45 degree flares and then my one thing i did get um was this it's a torque it's an adjustable torque wrench that um, it's made by Black Max or CPS, I think, is the uh, owning company. And because my quarter-inch line, my quarter-inch line here, both on the inside and outside nut here, is supposed to be 11 uh, foot-pounds, and then this larger one, this 3 8 line, this is supposed to be 18.4 foot-pounds. So really kind of specific, and I didn't. Obviously, I didn't want to screw it up, so I went ahead and picked up one of these, and it worked out great. And, of course, to help you along the way, I use Nylog um, on all my connections with refrigerant and stuff like that. So that's kind, of the, that's kind of the specialty tools of stuff right there. But if you don't have a lot of that, I mean, you're probably looking at three to $400 worth of tools in order to do that when... You know, you might pay that maybe a little more to have a professional come out and install it. So, you know, it's just one of those things. I have five cabins I'm doing, so anything I spend on one cabin, I'm going to use, you know, four more times. So cost-effective wise, it, it, it's more cost-effective for me to do it myself. And, uh, you know, we'll see when we turn it on. But so as far as the back of the cabin here on cabin three, this thing is donezo. Uh, little little bitty things here and there like I need to do something nice and neat with the ground wire all just kind of tidying up stuff but as far as installation and, and putting things in this thing is donezo and I'm pretty excited about that last thing I have to do in order to get this thing up and running I have to uh, vacuum the line so I have a vacuum uh, vacuum pump and everything like that so I have to vacuum the lines and then release the refrigerant into the uh, into the set and then we can finally kind of get it going so uh, tomorrow my primary job tomorrow is going to be on cabin two so I'm not going to be uh, vacuuming out these lines uh, tomorrow I will probably wait until I do this configure all of this on cabin one uh, and then just bring the vacuum down and then do them all kind of at the same time I mean no I don't need a uh, heat or AC inside the cabins right now. Uh, so, but getting them connected, getting them flared, getting the lines, you know, plus all the holes that we put in the, the cabin today, uh, all steps in the right direction. And I'm super happy with that. So, uh, that's probably going to be it. I am uh, a couple days here. I've got a couple days worth of uh, footage that. Uh, I need to, I need to offload this and get it out to you guys. So I think this is where then we'll end this video, and I'll pick up tomorrow. As I'm standing here looking at it, I'm gonna pick up tomorrow and start uh, kind of closing in that roof line there on cabin two. Okay. 
All right, guys, listen, hey, as usual, I appreciate you guys hanging out, taking the time to watch these videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I have stuff coming out usually a couple times a week. And I don't know, you can follow along when you, when you show up here to stay with us here at the Lazy T. You might have a question uh, that, you know, I would, I'm always interested to talk to people about what they've seen or things I've done and kind of how that is. So anyway, we'll see you on the next one.